So when did alcohol enter the picture and was alcohol sort of a way to make those social things easier? Basically, I felt a little bit like an alien growing up. Like I was different and human beings were different than me. Oh, you did? Oh, you, yeah, you, yeah. You felt like they've all got something right. or figured yeah, out something. Figured that... it out that I don't, I don't understand why we're doing this thing. Like why we're running around doing things and like... You, know, I mean, you were questioning the honest, entire fabric that was holding but society But honestly, it's together. still sort of confusing to me. Yeah. I'm like, we have major problems, like the, and like climate change, for example. And, sure. we, and we're just still like, you know, flying airplanes and eating meat and stuff. Like, I'm still just confused that like nobody's kind of stopping. Like, why don't we all just stop and like even just pray or whatever? Like, why don't we just take a day off of everything? But like, there, there are things that I'm just confused by human beings and like and even the rushing around like I live in New York and people are always like rushing around doing things and and it's funny to kind of view it from the outside and go like where's everybody going like why are we all like running yeah. so fast it's like because I have my life man like well but I guess I had more time to kind of view it from the outside and I always felt like human beings were like a weird thing so I had a couple different outlets like I had um creativity like theater which was a liberating wonderful thing where I could invest all this energy where I felt too intense and I could do this thing and then I had like alcohol and drugs where I could be like just like oblivion called what I call like non-being how did you it's discover a, them I started like in high school I kind of through my friends and then like I had a couple bad kid friends and like yeah. we would we would go out by because there's suburbs too which like I don't know if you've ever seen the ice storm oh yeah so like the the thing is like the distance between houses are so great and like kids are left alone in these big houses and so we would like you know whatever you steal like a bottle of and there was like a, a place in in like Mount Kisco or something that had like the guy would sell underage kids like and we had money like so we would just get and we'd just buy like good stuff too and, and you had a full beard at like 14 <laughs> exactly <laughs> and we just go up by the river and just get and we'd go out by these like reservoirs or like lakes in the woods and just get drunk and then you found out that like oh this this helps oh yeah 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 it was the answer i mean oh, for a lot of years it was the answer see i think that's interesting because i didn't have that and I always have been curious about when it's the answer, if you don't see, like, the end of the road on that. You know what I mean? Or if you see no, it, you, you don't No, you don't care. see the end of the road. <laughs> well, a little bit of both, actually, yeah. Because I remember coming into, um, into New York and making... I had this big joke about being an alcoholic, where like people would be like, "You're an alcoholic," and I'd be like, "I know." Like, I'd be like, "All my idols are alcoholics." Like, what are you talking about? Of course, I'm an alcoholic. Or like, I remember going to like a, I went to like a dinner party with like all these like young professional, you know, like, and they were like, "You," and there's this one woman who was talking to me, and she was like, "So you drink and you smoke and you," she's like, "How can you be happy?" And I was like, "Who's happy?" <laughs> And, like, that was sort of my philosophy was, right. like, you know, I was just super angry. And I was, like, and I guess that's the thing even about the law thing that I'm still angry about today. But, like, this idea where it's just, like, I'll deconstruct you. It's not a question of, like, uh, I'd still do it occasionally where it's, like, you know, I'll meet guys that are very kind of straight laced or something. And I'll feel like I have to go in because it's not a dick measuring contest, but it's more like a, I want to prove to you that both our dicks are meaningless. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to, totally. I want to, and I feel you doing this thing where you're like, I have money and I have power. And I'm like, I have money, I have power. Like, we're going to die. And like, let me just fart and all over this conversation. <laughs> There's just something in me that wants to be this kid that wants to like tear down uh, this thing. And so alcohol was a great. Because after a few drinks, you're like, you can just let that guy out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And not only can you let him out, but he's kind of the life of the party, too. Right? Like, for a while, at least, he was super charming and fun, and, like, people loved him. And then, of course, it turns, and he's, you know, just the worst guy. So you have to get sober. <laughs> hey, folks. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off-camera. And if you want to see the hour-long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is. OffCamera.com. Check it out.